do a video on the best cards of Kung Fu Panda, Battle of Destiny in the current meta. And uh, as you see, the current meta is the Spirit World Championship. And those are some of the new cards. Added a lot of fun um, cards to it, specifically the last three on the end there. And um, they made it, they put a wolf a wolf uh, motif in, which paired really well with Shen, which a lot of my last four videos have been Shen related. This one will not be Shen related in, in so much as I'll talk about some of the cards, but uh, it's going to be about the best cards of Kung Fu Panda as chosen by me, for whatever that's worth. So <laughs> um, Here we go. So we're going to do the best cards, and um, we're going to have fun with it. And we may do Master Specific in another video. I don't know. We'll see how much time we have. I don't want to bore you all with best cards. So the best cards, starting off uh, in no particular order. Um, starting to go from the zero cost all the way down to the end and why they're the best and why they should be used in different decks um, and some honorable mentions. The first one is the set to Dancer. Pretty solid card, really good cost, and really good late game card surprisingly. Just because it's a one cost doesn't mean it's early. You want to use this late game specifically in a Monkey or Shen deck where you can steal equipment. If you think about it, if there's a 2-2 equipment on the board, which is fairly common, you have a one cost 4-4. Four, four. Um, and not only is it a one cost 4-4, four, four, but you have neutralized one of your opponent's characters, taking away minus 2, minus 2. A very underrated and very powerful card in this set, Deceptive Dancer. I don't know if you need two in a deck, but one in a deck would not go wrong, specifically Monkey and Shen. As we keep on scrolling down the list, if you're running now, of course you're running an aggro deck, Pot Belly Bully is a solid card if you use it right. Um, specifically in Tigris is a really good for Pot Belly Bully because it's a one cost, it does basically three damage if you put Tigris' Bloodlust ability on it. Uh, Pot Belly Bully is a very good card for aggro quick decks. Keep on going. Wolfpack is a very solid card now with the Spirit World Championship. Uh, for, if you've seen my, my Shen Wolfpack decks, uh, really cool synergy there with Wolves. Uh, so this card has bumped up a little bit in the old Kulo meter trademark. And keep on going. Um, well, I mean, if you didn't know I was going to get to it, there it is. The Bunny Bowman. Probably my favorite card. And, I, you know, a lot of people say, hey, she flew the cards, comma. Uh, should Ludia make special mention of you with Bunny Bowman? I mean, I don't know. It's up to them. Just kidding, but it would be, you know, I'm just saying. No, Bunny Bone is one of the greatest cards in the set, one of the greatest cards, period. Almost, an, pretty much auto including all my decks because simply it's amazing late game, early game, board position, clears off some nasty early game minions, can clear off a big minion late game. Think about doing three damage for two. Um, it's just phenomenal. Could go on and on and on, but I'm not going to. Um, these two cards, Fast Foul is phenomenal in aggro decks and tiger specifically where I see it most played or any kind of deck that's using aggro uh, fast pace kind of thing is a low cost pushback and does pretty good damage so pushback what that does is if, a, if a, one of your opponents has a guard minion up and is kind of stopping you from going face this knocks the guard off of them and then pushes damage through at a low cost um, uh, too cheap so it is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal card in aggro decks. Almost have to be auto include at least one fast foul. And as you see so far, a lot of these great cards are commons and blues. I mean, the game design in this game is phenomenal, and they've done a great job. And you don't need to uh, you have legendaries to make a fantastic deck. Now, of course, legendaries help, but you don't need them to be fantastic. So fast foul, great card in aggro decks. Almost must include. Firetail is it's is the same cost, but you see the big difference is there's no pushback. Uh, pushback is so key late game. This one at two cost three three without pushback is more for early game tempo and just some creatures on the board as well. Um, lost internet connection, that's not good. Um, keep on going. Hungry Hog is 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 a specific. <laughs> Hungry Hog is a specific um, instance control decks healing. Um, the allergist is my pork plate combo trademark sheath of the cards um, <laughs> so pork so hungry hog is uh, situational for control decks I love hungry hog just one of my favorite cards um, 
A lot of aggro decks run Loyal Lackey simply because it's a two cost four damage minion. When you think about it, yes, it does two damage, but it also does two damage on explosions, so it's basically two da two cost four. You put it with the wolf synergies currently, uh, it's, it, it does even more and so on. So it's a very good card. I don't like it. I would love it if it had three health. It would be like one of my favorite cards of all time if it was a two cost two three instead of a two cost two two. Uh, that's just me, my play style. Uh, Proofreader is another solid card um, for tempo uh, players, um, aggro players. I don't use them in any of my decks, but draw a card for two cost, a one two. You know, you're playing aggro tigers with the bloodlust. It's a good card to have because you could play this. You could draw another early game minion, play it, and so on and so forth. Um, a really good early game aggro tigers card. Pyromancer came from one of the sets. Uh, I think it's last month's set. It is very good. It's a very good card for early game clear if you're running a control deck. Underutilized card, very, very good card. I use it in my Meditate decks because it has Meditate. Paired it off with Dawnbringer and Viper, it becomes a 4-3, even more deadly. So um, a good good card. Pyromancer is very solid, underutilized. Um, Razorback, I put that in there. This isn't one of the best cards in the set, but this is a situational card. Uh, if you're running a crane deck and you're running a leap crane deck, Razorback is really good because uh, you put an equipment on it, gains leap. It's really, it's really solid. Also, if you're running an equipment deck, um, it's, it's a finisher. So, um, Razorback is a solid equipment card or crane card. Sous chef. Uh, I, I go back and forth on this card. This card's very good. I don't know if it's auto include yet. Um, it is Blackout. Blackout can be very good against high-end decks, but against ladder, they're going face. They really don't use much text. This card is, keep an eye on this card. It's 1-3, good health, good cost. Blackout is very important. Basically, what that means is if you have a card like uh, Shen's Cannon, which is 0-7 and does does things, it blacks out. It comes just a 0-7. That's really powerful. Um, so, pretty solid. Uh, let's keep on going. Um, all these cards are solid. Just because I'm not picking it doesn't mean they're not great. Um, Barbarian, for example, I don't use it because I never have a. Because if you're running a big board full of stuff, um, chances are they're going to be low health. Um, but it's solid for aggro cards, Tigers cards. Bellhopper, very similar to the Wolf. I tried to. I've, I've done a Bunny deck. And they're very fun. A lot of synergy there with bunnies uh, and a better health pool than the um, Wolf pack. This is a great 2-6 card. Can't be equipped. It's just good good health for control decks. This card is currently probably the most powerful non-legendary broken card in the game. It is ridiculous. It is a it is a finisher. In almost every tournament deck you play, it is just super powerful. You play this on turn 10, you're looking at, uh, let's see, 13 damage for three chi, um, that's almost half of the opponent's life for three chi. It's 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 just ridiculous. And then you add on more stuff to it. I mean, this is an auto include in every deck if you want to win and have an explosion, a finisher. Chi transmuter is the most powerful broken card in the game. I could just go on and on, but just think about it. Three cost, turn ten. That means six chi goes to your hero, which makes it eight, and four sorry, is twelve. This 12 damage going right to face, and you still have, I'm sorry, 7, so 9 and 13, I was right. You still have 7 Chi to make more plays that turn, which means you can put a fast foul down and block, blow their guard out the water. You can put a um, Tiger it's, it's it's a death. It's death. Contail Cook is a, is a card I use quite a lot. I don't see a lot of people else use them. Um, really good for equipment. Just puts an equipment on the board for equipment synergy decks. Feline Flutus is another really good card. I'll go to the foil one. Um, can control decks and a really good 3 cost 2-5. That's a phenomenal health pool. Um, and it gives you a benefit. Just if you play it by itself, it's still a 3-2-5, which is really good. 3 cost 2-5. And the old standby, uh, Gold Tooth is just really one of the most solid cards in the game in any level. I'm trying to find out how to get him golden because he's just my probably my favorite card forever. Um, I don't use them really in any of my decks anymore because I've got alternates and themes and stuff. But if I'm building a solid tournament deck, you can't go wrong with Gold Tooth. Um, 
Oh, man, I missed this card. This card got nerfed. It was really phenomenal. It was a 2-6, just so good. And now it's pretty much useless. Um, but it's it was a good card back in its day, honorable mention. This card is phenomenal. Um, a lot of people don't use the stun mechanic. Stun mechanic is very big if you use it right. It can win you games. My monkey deck is built, basically built off of stun, and it's just really tough to deal with. This card, you should have one in every deck, um, maybe even two, because they're that good. You have a minion on the board that's giving you trouble, you just stun it and get rid of it. It's it's very powerful. Um, Proud Brewer is pretty solid card. <sighs> the card I named after my son. Um, this card is truly next to Bunny Bowman, uh, an auto include. I say that I was just sorry behind my son, son Tony, I love to death. He sneezes all the time. And he has bad allergies. And so every time he sneezes on my call him the allergies, drives him crazy. But um, it's a total term of total endearment. And this card, every time I play it, I think of him, which is really cool. So my son Tony, whenever you think of this, you see this card, think of my son Tony, and, and uh, it'd be funny. Anyway, the allergies is a really good card. It gains strength every time it takes a damage. If you play it right, you pair it with Hungry Hog, which heals him, gains strength. You see the pork plate combo in fruition. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, I want my baby back ribs. I'm old. Okay, so moving on. Sheepish Student. My most popular video right now has almost a thousand views and is built around Sheepish Student. This is still a very solid combo. It's my Crane one turn kill combo deck that everybody loves, but no longer really as powerful as it once was. Still can win you a lot of games and go to Master with it. 4 3 is very good. Uh, you just have to use it right. So, for example, you use Chi Transmuter, then you play Sheepish Student, and then a bunch of one cost. Some things it doesn't really matter. You're gonna roadhouse somebody and just run over them, and it's gonna be a great turn. Keep it on going. Oh, simply the most. If um, if there was a card that that, that auto include in control decks, and now you might not have a chance to get it because I think it's last month's Spirit Realm cards. This card is ridiculous. As strong as Chi Transmuter is, and, and this, they do a great job with the uh, Ludia, it's a great job with Spirit World cards. Um, Chi Transmuter is like the finisher of all finishers. This is the cooler of all coolers. Agile Acupuncturist, when used correctly, will neuter and neutralize your opponent's board and make it really tough to get anything going when used correctly. If you keep on keep this thing healed, you just keep on taking away their offense. And it is a beautiful, beautiful thing control-wise. This is a control centerpiece card, Agile Acupuncturist. This goes into Shifu's top picks. Axe Grinder, very solid card. Four costs, really a 4-6, which is pretty good health and damage. And we get into our first legendary, Commander Hugh. If you haven't seen any of my decks featuring Commander Hubris, enter Commander Hubris. It actually has almost 500 views from my Viper version of Commander Hubris. Um... Enter Commander Hugh, which is a great name my son came up with. Um, Commander Hugh, when played properly and put in a Meditate deck, is awesome. So much fun. My favorite, favorite legendaries. He goes with Shifu's top picks, which is that little star thing there. Um, just completely destroys the board. You're playing against aggro players, and it just makes them play in quicksand, and they hate it. And it's super fun, and it makes me smile on the inside and outside. Commander Hugh. You can tell the cards I really like. So far, to recap, my, my, my Shifu's top picks, Bunny Bowman, The Allergist, Agile Acupuncturist, and Commander Hugh. All right. This card is underutilized, but friggin' awesome. I'm going to get another one here pretty soon. Uh, if you think about it, Restore Damage Minion to Full Health. Pair that with the um, Acupuncturist. Pair that with the Allergist. A lot of A's. Um, and right there, you go back to full health and you just keep on pounding them. Also good with the Wolf Synergy decks, Synergy decks spe specifically Candid Canine. I know I'm doing a lot of information, talking kind of fast, but a lot of uh, my fans wanted me to do a what's the best decks, Shifu of the cards. So I'm kind of giving them all. My son doesn't want me to go longer than like 15 to 30 minutes, so I'm kind of trying to squeeze everything into that little thing. Okay. This is another phenomenal card. Um, it's a destroyer. It's a destroyer. Four cost four four, good good health good damage. It blows up their board and your board, which cost me a tie in my uh, one of my videos. Uh, it's really pretty funny. It has a lot of controversy. Good stuff to it. Solid card. Uh, 
Guard Dogs, I love Guard Dogs, and <clears throat> this is a card that's solid now, but not really great because there's it, there's not enough little wolves for it to go with, but you start putting some wolves down, like three drop wolves, there's one right now I can think of, a couple more three drop higher health wolves, this thing becomes awesome. Um, keep it on going. This is just a special shout out. Again, if you want to see my videos, this is uh, this is a card that reminds me of my mother, and I, you know we call her Nana. So this is a special card in my heart. Not necessarily a great card for decks, but just something I every time I see it, I want to do a shout out um, to that. Needles, a great control card, um, very close to Shifu's top picks. It just gives you plus health. Put this with the Agile Acupuncturist or the Allergist, you get the idea. It adds health pool and it makes those cards have longer lasting life. Scroll Leader, um, another legendary one of. Sh uh, this goes in Shifu's top picks. Uh, it gives you, it gives you, it works so many different ways. First and foremost, a Po deck. If you're going to build a Po deck, get Scroll Leader. Um, it'll give you food, which is good with Po in so many different ways. Also pairs with uh, Viper for Cartographer and uh, Shen Kin legendaries. We'll get that in a second. So um, it's just phenomenal. If you if you if you play Hearthstone, think of this card as a spare parts um, manufacturer. It just poops out spare parts. Uh, phenomenal. And then if you build a deck around that, it's a great synergy card. This is a very solid card for Blackout. Um, that's more of an honorable mention. This is a very good card for control decks. Um, it gives somebody plus two in guard. Honorable mention. This card is one of the solid cards that you get early on. That is, you could put it in every deck and be okay with it. Um, it's basically um, a great card. Good damage, good health, deals three on. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. Uh, one of the better cards in the game, especially the common. You put it, you know, pound for pound in terms of common. It's probably the best card in the game, pound for pound, at common. And here we get to the five drop cards that are in every tournament deck. There's three of them that you'll find in some form or another in some way. And they are the Champion. They all have Furious. Champion. Champion. Nagging Nanny. And... Trample Horn. I call these the three packs of five. All of them get the Shifu thumbs up sign of approval. Um, the champion, um, they're just all they're all great cards. They're all slightly different. Um, Trample Horn was the first card that I used. It gives you Swift, um, but it's probably the weakest of the two because it gives you plus one strength and Swift, whereas Champion. gives you plus three strength so it makes it much bigger and much harder to deal with uh, same for seven but plus three strength is that better than fury is swift I think so because uh, I have to deal with it anyway and it's like having a taunt so you don't necessarily need the swift and there's a lot of cards that deal with cards and taunt so champion is a little better than trample horn and naggy nanny is probably the one that most common uh, pro players use um, it's probably the strongest, and we get this, the, the biggest Shifu of the cards, thumbs up approval. And why is that? Because it gives you the plus three strength that Champion does, but it has a higher health pool. So it sticks around and is nastier. So Nagging Nanny is probably one of the strongest next to or more sh or stronger than Barrel Launcher. This is the thumbs up common card of the day at five drops. Now, along with the five drops, we really start getting into the, the big the big meat, the big finishers, the big banana ramas of Kung Fu Panic Battle Destiny, Barrel Launchers, Champions, Trample Horns, Nagging Nanny. And then we get into one of my favorite cards. And I think I'm the only one that likes this card. But I love it. I love it so much. Centerpiece to two of my decks, my Viper deck and my Monkey deck. Green Keeper. Um, it goes with... Um, Bunny Bowman is one of Shifu's most known four cards. Love this card. If you use it paired with kickoffs and meditates, it is just gives those cards extra value. In other words, you play a uh, barrel launcher. It does kickoff. 5-4, it does 3 damage. 
You play this right after that 5-4 becomes a 5-7. It doesn't matter that it's blacked out because it's already done it's what it's supposed to do. It doesn't need text. You're just giving it more life. You're doubling its value. Greenkeeper is one of the most underutilized sheaf of the card specials, uh, and it's won me you know, hundreds of games. Keep Greenkeeper, sheaf of the cards, top pick. All right. Jin Hu is a very good legendary, but specifically just basically for equipment card decks and a little bit of punch. Solid five, cost four, five, give somebody a three damage. This is a solid good card. Um, you don't have to have him, but he's really solid and fun to play with. This card gets a lot of run in a decks I see. You put somebody in guard, like a Mantis deck is really good. It's four, six, Golden Goose. Uh, it's really solid with pushback. Can't underestimate pushback. And then, you know, the it scared me on video. The come on, you see what's going on? <laughs> Little sound effects. The legendary that everybody has when they first start off. Uh, this this is the this is the, the legendary. <laughs> this is legendary that I that's the ha halfway horn. This is a legendary that I recommend that everybody gets first. It's just really solid, really strong, does a lot of damage off the start, and can guard. It's the Master Flying Rhino. Uh, phenomenal legendary card. <laughs> Alright, keep on going. There's uh, Nagging Nanny. Uh, Sanguine Scholar is a really good card as well. Um, it's one of those cards that Tony need to help her. It's one of those cards that is a good health pool. Good damage, and when it, it gets damaged, it gives you a token. So good with Tigris decks that you can, you know, Zerg the board with. Um, it's good in a lot of different varieties, but specifically um, giving you constant pressure. All right. Split hairs. I did a, a video about this with bunnies. Uh, Tigris bunny deck. I mean, that just literally talk about pressure. It just spits out two ones. A lot like my Shen Wolf deck, Boss Wolf spits out wolves and spits out bunnies. Uh, so that's always good to have that. Yeah. And then, so cool. uh, I didn't even know it lit up. <laughs> then uh, one of the legends I really like, uh, Big Boss. Um, a solid legendary that deals equipment <laughs> and stuns. It's really good and um, one of the solid legendaries of the set. Go with that one. Um, Commander Vosh is another legendary that is one of the more popular ones. Probably the strongest legendary pound for pound because of the dual effect it has. It comes out, does a lot of damage, and then when it goes away, it gives you another card. So if you utilize it correctly, you can run this into a big minion, destroy that big minion, gives you another minion that you can then attack with. So Commander Vosh is one of the strongest and probably the best legendary in the game. Keep it on going. Um, this is one of there was a there was a card food strategy about dodge, um, and Placid Plower was uh, my pick for one of the best dodge cards in the game, um, simply because it's a three six good health pool, pretty good low cost for the health, and you can't really um, hit it, and you pair it with uh, my Tiger's Control really where I see a lot of use for this, and Caretaken. So Caretaken every time you have somebody attack you gain two health. So you have a almost ever-living card that sponges two health every time they attack it, and they don't actually hit it, so it constantly heals you and gives you health. Uh, one of the best cards in the game. Uh, thumbs up on that one. A lot of people use Safe Guardian because it comes with the set, so it's one of the most common early game newer player cards. Um, high health pool. Um, it's very solid. There's nothing wrong with that. You can't... Uh, you you can replace that later on, but if you're starting on early control, that's something you wanna you wanna have. Um, one of the legendaries I really like that I happen to get a hold of. It's not overpowering per se, but you put this card in with paired with um, Scroll Eater, and then you put it with a Viper deck, and you pair that with Shen Kin, which also deals with thing of spare parts and stuff like that. Uh, scroll the Cartographer. I think is one of the more beautiful cards in the set. That's just my personal taste, but a very solid card. You don't. He's he's one of those that like you don't have to have, but he is fun and strong and um, just beautiful. Really, I mean, I, I I've had really no luck in the spirit realm of getting legendaries. He's the only one that I've gotten, so he has a special place in the cockles of my heart. Trademark.
All right. Keep it on going. Almost done. Um, Master Croc. Uh, this was really funny. Uh, Katie, my beautiful fiance, got this card. And when she got it, I was like, oh, that's, that's awesome. It was even stronger then. Um, but I told her foolishly, go, go ahead and disenchant it and get other cards. And she did, and I felt guilty ever since. Because um, it is truly, if uh, Commander Vosh is not the strongest legendary in the game, this is then the strongest legendary in the game, in my opinion. Simply because it's immune to equipment, and it destroys their board and has a high health and a low cost. So, if, if not number one, it's 1A. Um, weapon Caddy. A new card this month. It's coming out. Please keep on playing and you try to get it. Um, weapon Caddy is very strong. Steals and equipment. Wolf Synergy. Good health. Uh, and not only does it steal and equipment, but you get a card from the Armory next turn, which pairs off really well with um, the Dragon. And um, Master Thundering Rhino. Sorry about all the noise, guys. I apologize. We had family come over. <laughs> Master Thundering Rhino. Um, the best defensive card in the game, obviously. It has dodge, block, kickoff, and guard. I mean, dodge, block, and guard really is the main three things you're looking for there. It goes really well with any control deck. I have it in all my control decks. Specifically, Tigers with Care Taken. Um, it's just really strong. Um... Colossus is a card I just recently crafted. Um, goes with the Furious set. I mean, you just think about it. When you attack with it, it's a 3-2. And we hit. let's say you hit your opponent's face, it becomes a 9-10. <sighs> that's pretty beefy in any, in any, in any stretch of the imagination. Um, that's probably the biggest card in the game, attack-wise, that you'll see played just on its base stats alone, so I had to craft it. I have not yet a chance to use it in-game, although I'm trying. Um, Master Storming Ox, I love. I have my monkey deck because of the stun dynamic with him. Kick off, he comes in the game, stuns two, leaves, stuns two. That's pretty awesome. So he gets a thumbs up, seal of approval. And that's pretty much it for the basic cards of Kung Fu Panda Battle of Destiny. The must-haves, the tops. So if I'm going through again, the top 10 cards of the game, according to Shifu with the cards, I'm going to go uh, number one, the best card in the game. I'm going to go number one. Sorry for making dizzy scrolling. Number one card in the game, this is just for me, and this is, of course, if you thought, didn't think I'd pick something different, then you're just going to be very mistaken. Number one, Bunny Bowman. I think Bunny Bowman's the best card in the game for his cost, for his value, for what he does. Bunny Bowman, to me, gets the Shifu of the cards, top pick of the set. Number two of the set, Chi Transmuter. Um, and Bunny Bowman is just a part, you know, hard pick. This is actually probably the number one card in the set. It is the most devastating single card in the game and can win you a game just with one card. That obviously gets the first ranking. Chi Transmuter is the most powerful card in Kung Fu Panda Battle of Destiny currently. Um, Bunny Bowman, Chi Transmuter, one and two. Number three, and just because of the cost and value of these cards, the Allergist goes in number three, very solid number three, uh, very strong, just for his early game presence, late game presence, domination. Um, he's good in aggro, good in control, good in everything. The Allergist comes in safely at number three. Number four, Agile Acupuncturist, simply because of the dominance this card has in control decks. It slides in very safely at number four. Um, just domination. Now I'm probably going in order of value, so it's going to start from the low to the high just because that's why I place my value cards. Keep in mind they can be different for everybody, but these are what I think are the top ten cards. You can put them in any order. So number five. On top cards of Kung Fu Panda Battle of Destiny. I'm going to look and I'm going to vote and it's going to be, I'm looking for it, Master Flying Rhino, one of the better cards in the set. Um, very strong, just because of the leap, he gets the edge over the next card. Um, just swift, swift kickoff leap, everything else, amazing card. He's number five. Number six, barely edged out this card, um, but it's because of the leap that he got over. Uh, Nagging Nanny, 
is number six, one of the strongest cards in the set by far. Uh, maybe undervalued at number five and number six on my list, but still a very good overall. Uh, when you hit the when you hit the opponent's uh, uh, master, it becomes a six six. It's ridiculous. Uh, so that goes me to number seven. Number seven, we're gonna start to see a little run on legendaries here. Number seven is gonna be Commander Vosh. Um, probably too low on this list, but I try to value the cards that are attainable and lower cost first. So number seven, Commander Vosh, as I stated before, just really dominating card and has double value. Number eight is going to be Killer or Killer Croc. <laughs> number eight is going to be Master Croc, um, just for the defensive purposes and how strong he is. Um, simply one of the best cards in the game can change the game around. And coming in at number nine, right after that, can't go. I'm not going uh, legend specific. So coming in number nine right after that is going to be okay, is going to be barrel launcher. Uh, five cost five four does three damage. Uh, great value, common card. It's a good presence. Does initial damage on launch, and can hardly be beat at number nine. And finally, at number ten to end this list and to end this video, um, I am going to go with. A surprise, I think, if I can find them. Gold Tooth. Uh, Gold Tooth is still one of the best 10 cards in the game. Three cost, three five, good attack, good health, early game. Um, those, are, those are 10 cards I think you should have that are probably the best 10 cards in the game. You can argue, please post what you think are the best 10 cards on uh, underneath this video. I remain Shifu of the cards. I am very proud of this list. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next video will be on the top 10 or the must-have um, master-specific cards. Thank you very much. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please uh, follow me on Twitter at Shifu of the cards. Follow me on YouTube, Shifu of the cards. Twitch.tv Twitch backslash Shifu of the cards. Thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day.